Hi everyone, my name is Ashley. I'm um, just going to give a quick introduction, but I just want to say thank you for coming to Overcome Your Resistance and Embrace Virtual Networking. This is a partnership event between Squist and IWIS, who you will hear a little bit about. And yeah, we're just really excited to be here and be here with Sue, who is, uh, I will let her introduce herself, but a wonderful person. So yeah, like I said, I'm from Squist, which is the Society for Canadian Women in Science and Technology. And that is a big name for a not-for-profit that removes barriers for women and girls in STEM through programming, events, and advocacy. Uh, you can learn more about all the work we do and the work we've done uh, by visiting our website, which is at squist.ca, or you can just use that QR code on the screen to um, visit that, our website as well. We're always looking for folks who want to join us, um, volunteer with us, work with us, that sort of thing. So please don't hesitate to reach out. We would love to be in touch with you. And I would also like to say um, I'm grateful to be hosting this event from the traditional territories of the Ketsi and Kwantlen First Nation. And I'd like to welcome our speaker and audience who are joining us from the lands of numerous First Nations across the country. So thank you so much for everyone for joining us today. And now I will pass it over to Iwis. So, Oluwapalemi, you are up. Okay, can you hear me okay? We can. Oh, good. All right. So thank you for that wonderful intro. Uh, my name is Oluwa Kalumi, board member at iWest, and uh, I'm so glad to be here. I got my invite, I think, very late yesterday evening, so I'm quite pleased to be here. So Island Women in Science and Technology, iWest, um, we're a group of women who love to empower um, women in science and technology. We're um, mostly based um, in, on Vancouver Island, Victoria, but we also have members from across BC and actually in, in um, other provinces in Canada as well. So we come together, we do quite a, a number of um, events, uh, some in partnership with Swiss, as, um, as she has rightly mentioned, and some we just do it on our own. So we have quite a number of events. So if you want to join us, you can just log on to www.iwist.ca and you can join us. And we have um, a major program coming as well next month. You will get the details very soon. And um, yes, so that is Iwist in a nutshell. I can see some known faces, Iwist members as well on the group. So yeah, looking for an interesting time and um, learning from Sue and everyone that will contribute to this um, discussion. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited that we're doing this again because it sold out last time. It sold out again this time. So it's clearly something that's important. I love connecting women and especially women in STEM because I was one, you know, for over 20 years, actually, before I became a professional coach. And the whole networking thing was not something that was on my radar, except that uh, I realized when I became a coach, I needed to learn to network because I was terrible at it, <laughs> which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and now I've learned to love it. And now I, I'm on a mission to tell women and everybody, really, there is so many benefits for networking, but there are a lot of barriers. And, and so I want to talk a little bit about that and share with you how I overcame them. And for those of you who are going to have to run at the end of the meeting, um, you are going to get at the end, I, I, I Ashley actually is going to send out a, an email with a link. I have my networking for success workshop is going onto a new platform, a new learning platform. I'm offering it at a ridiculously low price with all kinds of bonuses. And uh, the first 10 people who actually sign up for it are, are actually going to get a one on one strategy call with me. So I just want you to be aware of that. So if you have to run and you don't hear that, hear about this at the end, please um, look out for that email from Ashley and she'll give you all the details. So um, let's just get into the first slide there where I'll my true confessions about my story about networking. So um, so I used to have this belief about networking, which I, and may, you may find that you have a lot of these beliefs as well, or one or two of them. I used to think it was about impressing people, you know, that you're supposed to go in there and talk about everything you've done and your qualifications, and, and that just didn't feel authentic to me. Then there was also um, this feeling that I might be judged and I might not measure up to the other people in the room. Um, I had this belief that it was all about making small talk and I'm not very good at doing that, or at least I wasn't at the time. Um, I thought I would go to an event and perhaps nobody would talk to me. And in fact, I did go to some events and that did happen. <laughs> you may have experienced it. I, I was also concerned I'd be, end up talking to people I don't really like or perhaps didn't even want to talk to. And then I, I had no idea how to introduce myself or really what to say in these meetings and, and that I would need to make time for it. And frankly, I was busy and I just didn't see the value. Well, 
things have changed. So next slide, please, Ashley. Um, you know, I've reframed my whole belief about networking. Um, now, this is my perception of networking. This is how I, I approach networking. It's about making new connections and also deepening existing connections with people you've already met. If you look at it from the view of looking for opportunities to help others, this changes everything. Um, it's about being curious and actually learning from others. It's a great opportunity to find out what's going on in your industry and in other companies. Um, uh, it is about being prepared. So you, you do want to prepare ahead of time, have an intro, some open-ended questions, and perhaps some industry data to have some dialogue around, you know. Um, active listening is really what it's all about, acknowledging what other people are sharing with you, not just waiting to jump in with what you want to tell them. And and showing up as your best self, you're still your authentic self, but you know, your best self, and, and following up with those people that you want to stay in touch with. And that's kind of an important part that sometimes um, people forget. So I, I learned to do all, all these things, you know, by, um, by practice, and and you can too. And, and then really, I took what I learned and put it into my course so that uh, I can help others. Now, why virtual networking is so amazing is because you can expand your reach to people in other cities or even other countries. Uh, there is no travel time or costs associated with, with the travel. Um, you get access and insights into organizations and resources that you just don't have access to potentially locally. It builds your confidence every time that you go to a networking event, introduce yourself, you are, you are boosting your confidence and it can raise your profile in the industry. And the other, perhaps more important thing is you learn about opportunities and the corporate culture in other companies, because um, let's face it, you know, in, in today's turbulent work world, we never know what changes are coming and having access to um, uh, people, a pool of people who perhaps work elsewhere and might be able to open doors for you because they know and like you is, is a really good thing to have in your back pocket. So we're going to talk today a little bit about the three parts to your introduction. And, and right now we're going to talk, we're going to go through them, but uh, you're going to have time to do a part one. And before we go into the breakout rooms, and this isn't a test, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's just kind of getting you, giving you a little bit of a template. So in part one, generally, you, you will introduce yourself and explain what you do, the function you perform. In part two of your introduction, this is if you have time, if you get to part two, um, and it will depend on whether it's a time limited situation or not. Um, here's where you would want to explain the skills and the training and experience you have and, and how you apply them in your work. And then the part three is really important. Like why, why does somebody need to do this? Why is your role important? What is the difference that you make for the company or your clients, your coworkers, or even the world from the things that you do? So um, if you have prepared that, uh, it's a lot easier to answer that question. So what do you do when somebody asks you? So moving on, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you an example of my, my introduction following that format. So my introduction is, I'm Sue Maitland. I'm an ICF accredited life coach and CEO at Best Dressed of Your Life Coaching. And for over a decade, I've been helping people make inspired personal and professional transitions aligned with their values, the strengths they love to use and what fulfills them. So that's what I do. Next slide is about my background and experience. So when I trained to be an ICF coach, I made a commitment to ongoing training. I'm also currently sharing my discoveries from the field of positive psychology through my newsletter. Um, I've helped many people make successful transitions through networking events like this one, blog posts on my website, LinkedIn articles, speaking engagements, 20 minute consultations. You're all invited by the way to reach out to me on LinkedIn and request one if you'd like. Online on-demand workshops and uh, on networking for success and priority setting. And of course, my one-on-one -on -one coaching. So now going on to why I do it. Well, through completing my workshops and coaching, people gain more self-confidence and they get this greater clarity about what it means to be living their best life, both personally and professionally. And they find the motivation and the inspiration to follow through and take action. So that's the difference why people would work with me and the difference that I make in the world with those people I'm fortunate enough to work with. So now we'll show you an example. We're gonna break down your part one. So it's your name, your job title. Now I wanna emphasize here, your job title does not have to be what the company uses as a label for your job. You should um, introduce yourself as whatever you believe that you are. You know, some, sometimes you get put on a junior project manager or something like that. You don't have to call yourself a junior project. You can just say you're a project manager, you know? I mean, it, it is, don't be constrained by 
by, but don't, don't over-exaggerate, but I'm just saying, don't, um, don't use a label that doesn't really quite fit everything that you bring to the table. Um, if you have a number of years of industry experience mentioned, if you've only got, you know, if you're really new to the industry, you don't need to include that. Um, you have a choice about whether you want to share the company that you work for. If you feel it's beneficial, you know, mention it, um, but it, it's optional. And then talk about the type of work you do and who you do this work for. So that is going to be your part one that we're going to give you a little bit of time to craft. But I'm going to show you an example of a part one, two and three. Um, for someone in, in IT. So here we've got, um, hi, I'm Mary Chan. I'm a systems analyst with four years of industry experience. I work for TELUS. And um, the type of work I do is I'm, I'm responsible for liaising between the programmers and the business users to make sure that the services that we're developing really do meet our business requirements and serve the needs of our customers. So that's what I do. The next part two and these slides, by the way, Squiz are very great at putting those out. So those slides are going to be accessible to you if you want to reference these later. Um, so the training Mary has is, I have a computer science degree. I keep current with new and emerging trends on an ongoing basis. I've learned to apply lean techniques to my work as a systems analyst. And I can communicate effectively with business users and technical resources to efficiently design solutions. And how did you apply those skills? Well, she, Mary says, I always practice active listening so I can be sure I understand what the person I'm working for is wanting to communicate. I imagine myself in their shoes and use language that's relevant for them. And I'm patient and I don't leap to conclusions. I share what I've discovered in a way that makes people receptive to hearing what I have to say. So that's how Mary does things. And then let's follow through to part three. Um, why was that role even necessary? So, so business users sometimes don't have that strong technical background and sometimes only have knowledge of their specific component of the business. So I help them see how their component fits into the whole and understand perhaps the, even the constraints of technology that we're working with while looking for opportunities to streamline processes. Um, the difference I make is I, I think I work hard to foster an open and honest, respectful workplace dialogue and I help people see other perspectives and find workable, efficient solutions that meet the needs of our customers within the constraints of the technology we're using. So that is a full, if you had the chance to give all three parts, that is what it might look like. Today, we're just gonna invite you to take a few minutes now, two or three minutes and just craft a part one. So we're gonna go back up to that template for a part one. And Ashley's gonna take us there, yeah. And, and just take a few minutes now. And if you, you may already have a, a part one crafted, if you have, that's fine. But if not, just take a few minutes and use this template now. And when we come back, we're gonna go into breakout rooms and you're gonna have a few questions that we're gonna ask you, but we'll talk about that when you get back. Just take a few minutes now and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. We should have some nice music playing in the background. <laughs> Next time we'll get the, the tunes. Little music or something, you know, like yeah. calming. Whatever. <laughs> Doing the time. Perhaps one more minute and then we'll get back into those. Into what we're going to do in the breaking rooms. Actually, I've been able to put my notes in the in the chat. Oh, good. Yeah, the chat suddenly emerged for me. <laughs> it's all coming together. <laughs> yes. All right, perhaps we should bring everybody back now. And this isn't some distress about, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is a kind of practice session and everyone here is here to just get to know each other in a safe and welcoming environment. So let's just um, go on to the slide that talks about what's going to happen in the breakout rooms.
So we're going to put you in rooms with three or four other people for about 20 minutes. So, um, and then we're going to come back to the main room and, and, and then you'll have, we'll have a second breakout again. Now, sometimes Zoom gives you different people every time. Sometimes you may end up with the same people in the room. It hasn't quite, it isn't quite smart enough to realize that you've already met somebody. So just have a deeper conversation with them if that happens. You don't need to do anything. You just want to click on the link when you're invited to join the breakout room. Ashley's going to set that up for you. And there is a warning kind of when there's only one minute left. That's a cue for you to um, wrap up if you're the person talking and also perhaps exchange contact information if you decide that you want to stay in touch. And after one minute, you don't have to do anything. You'll just automatically be brought back to that main room. So the idea is to, for you to each have five minutes to introduce yourself and maybe share a little bit of additional information. We've also got a, a second slide here with some ideas about uh, what you might want to do. It, it would probably be good to have somebody be a timekeeper, somebody who's going to get a little timer going and, and keep us to the five minutes per person. Um, we'll start with the person with the shortest hair. And uh, you can do your intro. And then these are other questions you might want to answer. How did you get interested in your type of work? What do you enjoy most about the work you do? What were you hoping to achieve? You may want to take a, a screenshot of this, but if not, there's, this isn't, you're not constrained to this. You can share whatever you'd like in your five minutes. And if you actually want to ask advice, you might want to talk for a couple of minutes and then ask for feedback from other people. So, um, all right. Um, I think this is it. I think we're ready to go into those rooms if, if you're ready to, to send us, Ashley. Thank you. Yeah, let me just get those set up for you now. Hello, everyone. Welcome back from your breakout rooms. Hope you had a good chat. Um, I think Sue just has a few closing remarks before we go. And then we can let you all get on with the rest of your day. Sue, I was just saying you might have a few things. You're muted. <laughs> okay, so yeah, just to wrap up, I hope you all had fun. You had some good connections. We're, we're talking already about potentially doing this on a more regular basis because we do seem to have a lot of interest in it. I just want you to know that that um, I'm in the process of getting my networking for success workshop onto a new platform. And at the moment, I'm offering special pricing um, for anybody who is signing up now. It's going to be available at the latest by October 15th. And um, you're gonna get bonuses like a one-on-one -on -one strategy call with me. There's a whole bunch of other bonuses as well. So if you're at all interested, it's helped so many of my clients um, and, and it's a limited time offer. Um, basically you're only paying $75, 40% off the regular price, then you'll have all the tools that you need to really ramp up your networking. That's the key. I put everything that I learned into this. Um, and then I think, I think the the whole package is worth about three hundred and fifty dollars today. Um, so I, I'm hoping you'll feel that this is attractive. I, I mean, it's so important for me to, for women in STEM to to have that opportunity to to network and and uh, I, I certainly um, think in today's turbulent work world, developing your networking skills could really be an excellent investment. So I, if you if you're at all wanting some help with that, um, I'm here to to support you and if you just like to connect on linkedin i'm happy to do that too so uh, i think the information is there in the chat did mm -hmm. finally figure it out yeah. thank you for being here yeah thank you everyone i will be sending out the recording and the links after this event too so don't feel like you have to write anything down uh, if you haven't already it'll come to your inbox but yeah thank you so much everyone for being here today and have a great rest of your day and thank you ashley you always do such an amazing job thank you thank you thank you it's a pleasure <laughs> bye everyone Happy